I am James Wimmelman. I am a law professor here at Cornell Tech, which makes me the law talking guy on this event. And I want you to think about three worlds, envision them in your mind. The first is the world of things made into art. So this is paint on canvas, paint on canvases and blocks of marble carved into shapes and pixels on a screen making beautiful animations. Everything we think of as art in the world. The second one, much less interesting, but also important, I want you to think about the world of laws. Words written on pieces of paper, and when you sign these pieces of paper and write down the right words and push them around in the right ways, things happen, and legal relationships change, and they make part and parts of society run from founding companies to selling houses, everything we do with law. And the third one, is the world of blockchains, even harder to visualize, distributed networks around the world, immutable distributed ledgers, record information digitally in a distributed way. And I want you to think about how hard it is to tie these three worlds together. We have spent thousands of years tying the world of things and the world of law together to make laws that actually govern the world and to make art tied together with those pieces of paper. That's an accomplishment that's taken centuries. We have centuries worth of copyright law telling us how it is that you sign these pieces of paper and push them out in the right way to give particular people ownership of this book, to say, you can screen this movie under these circumstances to say, you can reproduce and distribute it on screens around the world. That's been the work of many, many lawyers for a long, long time. And these pieces of paper have known problems. Sometimes the pieces of paper go missing and then you can't figure out who owns the art. Or sometimes the pieces of paper say things that are confusing or contradict each other. And then you have to sort out what did they really mean? What actually happened? Sometimes people forge these pieces of paper and make them up. Or sometimes they write the same words and give them to two different people. And now you both claim to own this painting. So using the world of blockchains to control the world of art by way of the world of law seems like a way to solve some of these problems that if you have to use your private key to sign a transaction, then people can't forge the documents that say they own this art. And if you have to use the private key, the ledger will check that you're not double spending the NFT that represents a piece of art. So you can't give it to two separate people at once. So they can solve some of these problems. But when you go from two worlds to three, you add other problems, things that are difficult to solve. Instead of lost pieces of paper, you now have to worry about lost keys. If you can't remember those bits, then your ownership record becomes trapped on the blockchain. You can't do anything with it. It's harder to recover from than if you're missing a piece of paper document and you can just get the legal system to recognize that should issue you a new one. And how do you keep the world of things in sync with the world of the blockchain? What if I give you this painting on my wall and I forget to transfer the NFT to you along with it? And now we have two of these worlds that have fallen out of sync. Or what happens in cases of hacks and frauds? If somebody hacks my computer and gets into my private wallet and they use my key to sign a transaction, transfer this NFT to someone else. And everyone I talk to has an answer to this last question. They know exactly what should happen. It's just that half of them say, well, this is a traditional legal problem. And of course, the person who is the victim of that theft doesn't, is the true owner, and the thief owns nothing, and they can get it back. And the other 50% say, well, of course, the blockchain is right, and you should have guarded your private wallet more carefully. And of course, they can't get it back. So everyone is certain that this is a disagree on what which side controls. So what I want to say is that blockchains solve nothing by themselves. By itself, a blockchain is just a bunch of bits 
sitting on some computer somewhere. It's by itself, it's like if I opened up Excel and I start typing in numbers and I say, that's my bank account now. It's huge, it's billions. If you want to solve something using NFTs and the blockchain, well, creating the art and minting the NFTs, that's the easy part. It's not easy. It takes technical skill. It takes creative ambition. It's hard but it's still the easy part of using a blockchain to control art because actually figuring out how all of those details work, who owns this, who has what rights in cases of dispute, what happens when these smart contracts go wrong, what happens when you have cases of ambiguity and mistake and your terms aren't what you thought they were. Solving all of those problems is hard. I don't know the answer. I don't have all the answers, and I'm 100% certain that there is no one on earth who has thought through all of these issues completely. Lawyers have spent a very long time thinking about these issues, thousands of years. And some of these are actually pretty smart people. If lawyers haven't fully solved all of the problems of art ownership over all of the time they've been working on this problem, well, it's not because every single person to come at this problem was just monumentally stupid. And it might not be because they were smart people who just didn't have blockchains yet. It might be that they haven't fully solved all of these problems because they are extremely hard problems. So I welcome the NFT artists and technologists to try to help them solve some of these. It won't be easy work but it might expand our sense of what is possible. Happy to take questions. Yes. Uh, I read your paper on all smart contracts are ambiguous. So I would know what does ambiguity of smart contract means for NFTs. So questions about ambiguity of smart contracts for NFTs. And the kind of ambiguities I'm thinking of are what happens when a blockchain forks or when the protocol changes. Ethereum just went through an amazing complicated shift from proof of work to proof of stake that took an immense amount of agreement in the community to make this work. But what happens if some dissidents say, we don't agree with this change. We're sticking with an old proof of work style Ethereum blockchain and we'll just keep on doing our transactions there. Well, now you have every NFT that was ever minted on Ethereum living on multiple blockchains. Which of these is the true NFT? Which of these gives you the right to display that image on your Twitter avatar? The blockchain itself can't answer that. We're going to rely upon some of those same institutions that Mukti was talking about to help us decide and credential and say, no, these are the NFTs the art world regards as valuable. Even the blockchain can't help us decide which blockchain is actually authoritative for the art we care about. <laughs>